Hey, this is Scott with the Scotch Test Dummies. You're about to get an inside look, behind the scenes look at my office, uh, my whiskey collection, and where we shoot from. I am in my basement. This is the door. So let's go find out what we've got. As we enter into the office, I've got the camera set up here recording so we can get a look at my collection. Come into the room and you can see there's a desk that I sit at. So you can see this is a smaller bedroom. And then the uh, whiskey shelves behind me. As you come in and you look to this side of the room, uh, bookcases, Ikea. Okay, so we'll walk you through a little bit. Now this is going to start out for our uh, Patreon uh, supporters at first. And I'm going to post it there. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get a first look at this. Uh, for a couple weeks at least, maybe a month, and then I will post this to YouTube. What I'm going to do is walk you through now some of my collection, uh, go through some of my bottles. We are looking at over 400 bottles, uh, which sounds like quite a bit. There are uh, YouTubers, whiskey reviewers, people in the whiskey business with a lot larger collections than that. Also keep in mind 90% of my bottles are opened. Uh, we review them on the show. That's what we do. If I really like something, I go buy another bottle of it. Second shelf down, and we'll be looking, starting over here, then to the left and wrapping around this way. So right, I got my Spring Banks, uh, Long Row Red, 13 year. That was a very nice whiskey. Uh, open bottle of Hazelburn 13 back there. There's a Spring Bank uh, 20 year single cask, delicious ex bourbon couple of uh, single cask nations at the back. Vega 41 year, a blend, very reasonably priced. Uh, my Springbank 10, moving over into Glen Rothis, Johnny Walker green, because it won't fit on the top shelf. My open bottle of uh, Glen Rothis single cask for Kansas. This is a 33-year-old Glenrothes. And my two Kilcarens back there, we just reviewed those not too long ago. You'll see uh, Linkwood. Oban Little Bay. Two Douglas Lang Old Particulars back there. Blair... I say Athol, Athol, and Glen Goyne, both 20 years. Um, an old bottle. This was a Dusty I found, the Dalmore Grand Reserva. That predates the cigar malt, or the cigar blend uh, that uh, Dalmore now does. And that's at 40% uh, as well. A little disappointing in that, but it's still sealed. Haven't opened that. Uh, we've got Akintosh and Three Wood. I just finished my Akintosh and 21 year the other night. Uh, a sealed Aaron 18. Mortlock 16 and Mortlock 12. We've got Brook Lottie, the classic Lottie. There's a sample of Glenfiddich Snow Phoenix. Uh, famous Grouse 18, still sealed. Those are excellent bottles. And that one was just found on a shelf um, a couple months ago in North Dakota for $60, I believe. Uh, mainly Highland Park and McAllen in those bottles. In the back, we've got uh, some Glenfiddichs, Klein Leash, Glenmorangies. And I move into my Glen Goines. I've got. Uh, 21 in the back, 18 back there, uh, coming forward, 15 in the cask strength, and a 12 year old up front. I've got uh, several different bottles of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. They do some wonderful, wonderful bottles. One of our original Glen Cairns, it's got this was the very first batch that Bart and I got, and it's got the dummies on one side, and it says Scotch Test, test Dummies on the back. A 
uh, Craig Ellicky, 13 and 23, Glenn Farkless, 105, Old Pulteney, 12, and Glenn Livett, Enigma. So that was this shelf up here. Now we'll take a look at the compass boxes as it wraps around. Really the only thing different on that shelf are Glenn Farkless's over on this end. In the back, uh, back there you can see my Circus and three-year-old Deluxe. The compass box Hedonism, the Muse. Uh, Hedonism Quindecimus. Uh, a compass box a special release from Bounty Hunter Wines in California. Next to it is one of the original uh, or original um, first special releases for hedonism that John Glazier did called the Maximus. I think there's only 1,200 bottles of that one. That's probably my most rare. Uh, the Asyla, an old bottling of uh, Eleuthera back in there with the old label. Oak Cross and a Benny's compass box. Got two bottles of that one. And back in the corner, Enlightenment. Uh, coming back, the Spaniard, uh, back in there, there's the Lost Blend, uh, one of the original or early versions of Flaming Heart, Flaming Heart, Flaming Heart, uh, the New Myths and Legends, one, two, and three, Compass Box, the Juveniles, Tobias and the Angel, uh, the original bottling of Delilah's and the 25th Anniversary, uh, bottling of Delilah's back there, Stranger and Stranger, and I skipped over Phenomenology. That was the big shelf, but then still wrapping around. Um, Double Single, Affinity, Great King Street, Artist Blend. That was a special bottling that was done by Tonight's Poison on Instagram. Great bottling, a little sherry cask influence. And then uh, Great King Street, Glasgow, Glasgow Blend. Oh, I moved that. I was like, what's that doing there? Move that down from earlier. Uh, Spice Tree Extravaganza, another bottle of Enlightenment. And uh, Juveniles. There's my Glenn Farkless, 17, 21, 25. And a sample of Tomatin 50. That uh, my 50th birthday is coming up by the time this posts on YouTube. I will be 50. And that will be gone, as in I drank it. Uh, the tubes at the back are extras of some compass, some of the compass boxes that I've bought. Flaming Hearts, Extravaganza, Double Single, Spaniard, Phenomenology, No Name, and Not a Luxury Whiskey. Oh yeah, where's my Not a Oh, there's not. I didn't hit the front over here. Uh, by Myths and Legends, this is Not a Luxury Whiskey. That is a beautiful, beautiful dram. No Name 1 and 2. And the circle. Okay, so that was pretty much down to here. Now we'll start, we'll take a look at the bourbons and the ryes that I've got as we stretch around. So just starting in the middle looking and working uh, to the left, little book, chapter one and chapter two back there, both unopened. Uh, Booker's 19.1, Teresa's batch that we just used in our 16 bottle barrel proof bourbon shootout. I've got a couple of the Woodford Reserve uh, Special Editions, Annual Master Collections there, the White Corn, and Brandy Cask Finish. Got my Wellers up front here, Wellers 12, Antique, and Special Reserve. Moving into my Iron Roots, wonderful stuff coming out of Texas. Uh, Harbinger, Icarus, and Icar. Icar, the black bottling was for their fifth anniversary. Uh, a couple old foresters in there, 1920 and 1910, which we have yet to review. That should be coming up soon. I've got a uh, Rieger's monogram in the back, uh, Oloroso Sherry Botas, two bottles of Eleanor from the Whiskey Vault, my new Riff single barrel, uh, a couple of Bell Meads. Uh, this was a uh, California edition through, I want to say Bounty Hunter Wines on that one as well. And then um, just Bell Mead, it was a nine-year single barrel that was, quite frankly, delicious. Moving into then all my uh, 
Elijah Craig barrel proofs that are open. All of my Elijah Craigs, I've got um, three 2018 bottlings open, B519 and C917 that's open. In the back you can see my uh, blackened Smooth Ambler, Blue Note Bourbon, Smooth Ambler Old Scout. That one was Contradiction. In the back, a couple of E.H. Taylors and my Stags. Almost empty. I savor those. I've got uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor Four Grain. Barrel Proof. And a single barrel, all delicious. Strand of Hands out of Colorado. Uh, the regular release, I've got uh, the Sherry Cask back there. One bottle of a McCarthy's special release in the back. That was, I believe, cognac uh, finished. Yellowstone bourbon back there. Another single cask nation bottling here. Dickel 13 year. Mm. Eagle, Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare and Joseph Magnus. Midwinter Night's Dram. Uh, St. George Distillery back there in the back. Angel's Envy. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in port barrels. I've got a couple of James E. Peppers here. The 1776 Barrel Proof Rye. And the uh, Sherry Cask finished rye. Very unique. Sazerac, Basil Hayden's, Old Whiskey River, Templeton, Lead Slingers, Old Forester Rye. We just reviewed that one. There's Whistle Pig, Soldier Valley, Wild Turkey 101, and Pikesville. Okay, so we finished up up here. Uh, we'll come back down here and go through most of These are mostly sherried whiskeys up here. Uh, on the back of this shelf, and this is uh, one I have tiered, so the back bottles are sitting up a little bit higher, but most of my Macallans, or all of my Macallans, are back in there. You got the standard bottling of 12 year, the double oak, 12, uh, or the 15 year fine, uh, the 2017 classic cut, Macallan 18, Macallan Estate, and Macallan see if I can get it angled down. One, two, three, four, five. Um, two, this is a 28-year Bunahaven, Alexander Murray Company independent bottling. Come back to, that, to something that's... I need to... Underrated right here, the Tamdu Batch Strengths. Into my Glendronics, 1993, 25-year vintage, 21 Parliament. 18 Allardyce, 15 Revival. That's the old bottling, just Oloroso matured. And Glendronic 12. Come down the front, Balvenie Tun, 1509, batch 3. Uh, the old bottle of the Signature 12, which predates the 12-year Doublewood. This is the 15-year single barrel right here, the original that was ex-bourbon cask. Uh, single barrel 15-year sherry cask, the newer one. Peat Week, uh, the 2003 vintage, delicious, which was from 2018. 2019, they released the week of peat, not as good as the vintage, 2003. Uh, the American Oak. I won't say anything about that one. Peated cask, 17 year. So that was this shelf here. We'll move into this shelf here, some of the, the eye candy bourbons. This bottle, of, this bottle of Van Winkle 12, I got several years ago when you could still get it for a reasonable price before people started going crazy. I got my uh, Tex Texas Whiskey Trail, Glen Cairn there in front. Boba Fett's hiding one of my Blood Oaths, I've got Blood Oath 2, 3, 4, and 5. No Blood Oath 1. I never did see Blood Oath 1 in Kansas. And never had an opportunity to buy that one. So, 
uh, Stag Jr. Batch 13, Parker's Heritage, the Orange Curacao Barrel Finish from 2018, I want to say, Elmer T. Lee, Jack Daniels Heritage Barrel, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, very good, bottle of Blanton's back there, and Old Ezra 7 Barrel Strengths, and Henry McKenna 10-Year Bottled in Bond. And moving into the peated whiskeys. In the back, Lafroig, a 10 year on the left. Lafroig, quarter cask, a sealed bottle of Lafroig 18 still. Very good, very good. Lafroig triple wood. Lafroig lore. Kalila 12, Highland Park 17, the dark. That one is really good. Uh, Black Adder, Pete Reek Embers. And Black Adder Red Snake. Octomore 6.3. Delicious. Uh, Lagavulin. That one is the uh, 2017 distillery release. 12 year uh, 2014 bottle. A sealed bottle of the 2017 12 year, which was simply just an outstanding whiskey. Uh, Lagavulin 8, and round out Lagavulin in the front, of course Lagavulin 16, Lagavulin 11, the Nick Offerman edition, and the 18-year Fajil uh, bottle from Lagavulin. Ardbeg 10-year should be on everybody's shelves, Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release, and Ardbeg Drum committee release. Bunahaven, uh, far left right here. Uh, that's a distillery release, a Montiato finish, simply beautiful. The 14-year Moignier PX finish from the distillery. This was a 14, or this was a Marsala finish. I don't remember the age on it. Um, came out several years ago. Very good. Boonhaven 12, Boonhaven 18. Love them all. Moving right along into some bourbons that I have down here sitting on the bottom shelf. Kind of a mix, mismatch down here, uh, just a little bit of everything, but uh, Woodford result, Reserve Malt at the back, a Wathens single barrel, Rus Russell single barrel, Russell's 10-year Jim Beam repeal batch, uh, Jim Beam Devil's Cut, a couple of Westlands, uh, the Peated and the American Oak version, both very good. Who doesn't know Heaven Hills bottled in Bond? Johnny Drum, uh, Open, Elmer T. Lee, Jim Beam Bonded. We've got our three Evan Williams, white, green, and black. Excellent value buys. Old Ezra 7, not the barrel strength back there in the back. Then we've got uh, Balcones True Blue, cask strength. Uh, Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit, single barrel, Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark Cask Strength and the Maker's Mark RC6 Wood Experiment Series. 1792 Full Proof, that was featured in our bourbon, uh, barrel proof bourbon shootout. And Bottled in Bond, 1792, both great bottles. And second one down, so this has a, just kind of a little bit of everything of scotches. Uh, Tomatin sitting up front and center on this one. There's the Westland uh, Peat Week back there. I did miss that one on the bourbon shelf, but uh, Tomatin 36 year, Tomatin cask strength. This is the uh, Pedro or Pedro Jimenez PX distillery only release. Uh, hard to beat, one of the best scotches I've had. Tomatin Dualcus, Tomatin 15 year Moscatel uh, finish. Uh, Toby Moore, uh, this was one of the lost distilleries. My wife got me this for Christmas. I'll allow her an older bottling of Abuna, uh, batch number 27. And batch number 57, I've got Deanston 12-year Paulo Cortado finish. Deanston 12-year, Deanston 15-year organic. Uh, all very good. In the back, there's Kirkland 20-year, uh, Glenfiddich Fire and Cane, Port Charlotte PC-12, and I can't even, Oileanoc Furikai. That's close. Port Dundas 18-year, a grain whiskey. Very good. Lechig 10. 
our Lechig 19 year Marsala cask, a cast strength finish that did real well in our top five scotches of 2019. A silver sill, uh, 20 year, very dark, very good, unfortunate bottling at 40%. This is an independent bottling. Edra Dower single cask, Oloroso sherry finished, very good. Glen Scotia double cask. Uh, Tomatin Kuboken, Tomatin 18, an older bottling still sealed, uh, and a uh, cutter by Enoch. In the back, back there, a few exceptionals uh, the exceptional grain, the exceptional malt, and the exceptional grain. I thought I had a blend back there. I do somewhere. Must be an extra bottle. Uh, Talisker Distillers Edition. Uh, next over from Roy, a gift. This was uh, made his whiskeys. Uh, Lechegg, this was, I believe, this is an 11 year independent bottling from the single malts of Scotland. Oloroso finish, and if you can see the color of that, it's simply superb. Bowmore 12. Uh, the blue label is not blue label, it's just a bottle. It has our infinity blend of all the leftovers from our sherry shootout. And then I've added to it as well with more sherry, uh, different sherry bottlings that I've gotten. Sia Canya by Paul John. Uh, Tullabardine, the Murray. Blue Hanger, 10th release. Uh, Kirkland, 18 year back there in the back. And then our Infinity bottle from our Pete shootout. All through there into our my bourbons that are in this area right here. Just start on the right. Uh, the only two orphan barrels I have, Rhetoric 23, Gifted Horse, Spirits of the Apocalypse, Walking Dead, Bourbon, uh, Rebel Yell 10-year single barrel, Four Roses, Small Batch Select, Michter's 10-year Michter's Toasted bar or Barrel Strength Rye. There's the remnants of my Toasted Barrel Rye. I had to downsize the bottling, Sour Mash, and Toasted Barrel Sour Mash. In the back, we've got Jack Daniels, number 27. We've got another bottle of George Dickel, 13-year bottled in Bond. Uh, Adventurous Stills, Peralta Bourbon, some Sagamore Spirits. There's the Port Finish. There's the uh, Double Oak. We've got Jefferson's Ocean. Lamosin Rye. An old uh, handle of Elijah Craig, 12-year. And Early Times Bottled in Bond. In the back, if I can get through some of these, Long Branch, 10-cup, uh, 10 10-year. 10 Couple of Four Roses, one is the OESQ, and one just the regular store release single barrel. We've got Breckenridge Whiskey Port Cask Finish in the back, and then my Knob Creek's uh, store pick. I've got Knob Creek Quarter Oak, or Quarter Cask, uh, Knob Creek 25th Anniversary, and then Knob Creek 2001, all back there. And into my Irish whiskeys, bottom shelf. Uh, I'll start left to right here, Rider's Tears, Double Oak, and Rider's Tears Cask Strength, Redbreast 15, 12, 21, Lustau Editions. Uh, in the back is my other uh, red breast from Bounty Hunter Wines in California. They did a single barrel, uh, cask strength 14 year release, simply delicious. We've got uh, Hyde 10, uh, one's a rum cask and one's a sherry cask finish. The Quiet Man, Sons of Aaron, and Pogue Castle 16. And the second shelf, Slain Temple Bar. Teeling, small batch, Teeling, single grain, Teeling, single malt, Jameson Distiller Safe, Jameson Blender's Dog, and Cooper's Crows. And then we've got Powers, John Lane, John's Lane Release, and Powers, Three Swallow. Uh, extra bottle of 15-year Red Breast and 21 in the back. Jameson Black Barrel, Green Spot, Yellow Spot, Red Spot. Mm, Jameson uh, Caskmates Rye Cask Finish. Uh, and then a Black Adder, Drop of the Irish, Tullamore Dew, 14 year, Tullamore Dew, uh, 12 year, and Tullamore Dew Phoenix back there. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. That might be a little bit longer. I'm going to see if I can trim that down a little bit, but um, that's pretty much my collection. That's 400 and some bottles in there. 
Uh, thanks for tuning in. Like I say, our Patreon uh, supporters are going to get a first look at this, and then it'll go on to YouTube. So uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. A little behind-the-scenes look and a look at my uh, shelves. Also, be sure and check out uh, my top 10 whiskeys to try before you die video. See you later, dummies. <laughs>